Only 10? Eva Marie is currently AWOL from WWE at the moment, failing to reappear after she was removed from our screens after a wellness violation. Of course, considering she's often cited as one of the worst workers on the roster and author of more botches than a drunk sink car who drinks to ease the pain of having his spinal cord removed, people might not exactly be clamouring for her return. She probably won't, with rumours circulating that WWE won't renew her contract when it comes up. With that in mind, let's take a look back at the career of the lady who made us all dread everything. I'm Plumpy from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 things WWE want you to forget about Eva Marie. Number 10, she was set to win the NXT Women's Championship. You heard me, you heard me with your sad ears. So we live in a world where Jinder Mahal is a WWE Champion, so it really should be that much of a surprise that at one point the mad bastards wanted Eva Marie to be the one to beat Bailey for the NXT Women's Championship. It was set to be the culmination of all of our hard work training under the Brian Kendrick. We'll get to that. Imagine the hatred. She couldn't have been hated more if she set fire to a statue of Nelson Mandela made out of the American flag. Unlike Jinder, who a lot of online fans seem to be behind as an ironic tween and mainstream alternative, Eva Marie as champion would have genuinely f***ed off everyone so much, it almost would have been worth doing. Almost. Number 9. That interview with Jerry. You only get one chance to make a first impression and only one chance to stamp that opportunity to death and bury it in a shallow grave. Eva Marie first stepped into a WWE ring in a Miz TV segment on the July 22nd, 2013 episode of Raw, a great day for red hair dye everywhere. During this segment, which almost became famous for Bree's boob making an appearance, not only did Miz and Jerry Lawler refer to her as Eva Maria, but they also gave her a live mic. The promo Eva then cut was, on a scale of 1 to 10, nope. As you'd expect if someone rushed onto the mic without full trade, it was flat, came off as heavily scripted, and ended with a slap so weak it looked like it was underwater. And again, I know a thing or two about weak slaps. Number eight. Ginger Mahal. It's always nice to get a chance to talk about the WWE champion, the WWE champion, the WWE champion, Ginger Mahal. So after a few months on the main roster, it became obvious that Eve Marie wasn't great shakes at the whole wrestling thing, so they tried giving her a run at announcing. In a match on Superstars, pitting 3MB against the Usos as the rock band consisting of Heath Slater, Drew McIntyre, and current WWE champion Ginger Mahal. As they came down to the ring, Eve Marie remembered Heath's name, remembered Drew's name, and then drew a blanket Ginder's. When later on, asked if she actually knew his name, she said she did, it was Ginger Mahal. So close. It's unclear whether the whole thing was a work for Total Divas, or whether she's just a bit sh**. Number 7, the Raw before WrestleMania 32. Ah, WrestleMania 32, the things you do to me. I think we all agree that WrestleMania 32 was excellent and that nothing bad happened, that everyone was really happy with WrestleMania 32. On the pre-show, which was a great pre-show void of problems, Team Bad and Blonde faced off against Team Divas in a match that would serve as Brie Bella's last in the company. On the go-home Raw before Mania, the company's last chance to make the yearly spectacular as tantalizing as possible, all the Divas in that match took to the ring on the last night they'd officially be known by that term. After a match between Paige and Emma descended into a brawl, out came Eva Marie to make the save. You know that time Stone Cold Steve Austin became the old Stone Cold and ran in to beat up the Alliance before the Invasion pay-per-view? It was basically the porn parody of that, only with the intensity replaced with boobs and the expected huge fan reaction replaced with apathy at best and scorn at worst on the WrestleMania Go Home Raw. Number 6. That Finisher. This is starting to feel mean, but seriously, all them botches all them botches though. Considering the wealth of female talent around the globe which WWE are acknowledging with the Mae Young Classic Tournament, the fact that Eva was resting on a public stage is pretty irksome, especially with that finisher. Eva mostly used sliced bread number two, her trainer Brian Kendrick's finisher, but they tried her out with a different one as well, and it was a piece of sh** in a match with Liv Morgan, then known as Marley, which was full of botches to the point of the crowd chanting, please don't hurt her, and after one move, what was that? Eva hit Marley with something that was supposed to be a cross between a shining wizard and a reverse STO, which just looked like Eva slowly giving herself a back bump while nestling Marley's head into her boobs. I know we can't animate it, but gosh, bad that. Number five, forgetting to kick out. Dem botches though. So next up on the cavalcade of hell known as Eva Marie's ring career was another moment from NXT, showcase of the finest indie talent in the world. In an already tepidly received match against Billy Kay, the soon to be iconic Aussie nailed Eva Marie with a devastating move known in modern parlance as a lateral press for going for a pin. The ref counted to one, then two, then realizing that either Eva Marie had died, fallen asleep, or forgotten to kick out, stopped his own count to howls of derision from the hardcore NXT fans. Look, creative can only book you not to lose. The rest, really is up to you. Number four, the redemption failed. So all of this brings us to the reason that Eva was in NXT in the first place, which was supposed to be the redemption of Eva Marie. For two years, Eva had been used for precisely the reason she'd been hired as a reality TV star. Not knocking that, it's a living. Then in 2015, WWE started her on an odyssey to actually become a 
wrestler teaming her with the Brian Kendrick, an excellent wrestler and chum to Daniel Bryan. While it cannot be disputed that Eva did improve a tiny bit in the same way that two slices of bread on top of each other is better than no sandwich at all, she didn't improve nearly enough to complete the planned storyline of her lifting the NXT Championship. Number 3. Injuring Carmella Case in point. WWE is strongly of the belief that putting the belt on someone who isn't very good to piss off the fans is fine. Here's a picture of Jinder Mahal for no reason, but those troll lols get a bit sour when that person actually starts injuring her co-workers. In October 2015, Eva Marie was wrestling Carmella at a house show when a routine spot went wrong. The princess of Staten Island was draped over the ring apron and all red everything gave her a kick to the all head everything. Unfortunately, Eva gave it a bit too much welly, leaving Carmella all dead everything with a bugger of a concussion and the match had to be stopped. That's the sort of thing that takes the push of an anti-superstar from funny to actually this is dangerous. At least Jinder Mahal never concussed anybody, apart from Finn Balor in April. Number 2. The Wellness Violation Eva Marie hasn't been seen since August last year when she was removed from TV entirely after a violation of WWE's wellness policy was made public. A 30-day suspension turned into 60, into 100, and now Eva Marie has racked up over 9 months on the bench. More egregious than the suspension itself, which WWE never really likes to brag about anyway, was Eva's partner's reaction. Eva Marie's husband posted on Twitter, When the public finds out why my wife was unjustly suspended, there will be absolutely outraged official statement and facts coming soon. Soon. This statement was quickly deleted, the facts did not come soon. In actuality, Eva's suspension coincided with a lot of people's, all who protested that the substance they were taking was prescribed and that the whole thing was an admin issue. But no further info came to light and if WWE want you to forget suspensions, they definitely want you to forget their suspension system might be broken. And number one, the experiment almost worked. If the rumours are true and WWE is waiting it out until Eva Marie's contract is up, then perhaps the most annoying fact of all is that after three years, the experiment actually might have almost worked. WWE started to introduce Eva Marie with a comedically grandiose introductory voiceover for stopping her from wrestling. Sure, the fans still booed, but suddenly there was a concept actively at work. WWE seemed to be on the same side as the fans. For once, they were steering into the abject rejection of Eva as a wrestling personality and with genuine heel heat, not the ironic greatest WWE champ of all time better than Lesnar ironic heat that Jinder's got, then they actually had a workable, nay valuable storytelling commodity on their hands, which for one reason or another, they've let slip away which in the end is hugely ironic. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm Plum People from and I'll see you soon. You there, do you want to prove you're a wrestling smart ass? Then answer me this. <laughs> Who was the first Alliance invader to win a championship in the Invasion storyline? Like awesome, it was the Hardcore Championship. Did you get it? I don't care. To test yourself and whatever friends you might have, buy the new What Culture Wrestling trivia game available at shop.whatculture.com.